Welcome to part two of our Solid Edge Wiring and Harness Design blog series. In this video, I'll introduce you to the harness design process. Solid Edge Harness Design is a graphical design environment for creating harness and form board drawings. Solid Edge Harness Design automates the complete design to production flow to achieve greater wire harness manufacturing efficiencies. It uses a controlled and streamlined correct by design process to provide digital continuity across domains and can be used for in-house production or build to print purposes. The previously mentioned graphical layout of harness and foreboard designs along with the automated harness bombs and cutting list and built-in intelligent parts libraries makes harness design easy. We will look at the connected mode in a future blog article. Let's view the demo now. I'll start this demo in an existing project and create a new harness design. I'm prompted to enter in some parameters for the new design, such as the name and a part number. I also have the option of providing a short description and a more detailed, lengthy description. There are additional options that I won't get into details in this demo due to time constraints, so I'll just accept this and say OK. Notice the new harness diagram sheet appears. I'll expand the design header in the project window and notice the correlation between the information I entered and how it was used in the naming of the design and its components. I'll start the harness design by selecting the static bundle command and creating the first branch by drawing a straight line. I double click to terminate the branch and then I'm prompted to enter in the value of the static bundle. In this case, I'll use 380. Notice that with a static bundle, the length I specified when placing it into the diagram remains the same. The 380 is a not to scale dimension that will not resize the actual length of the branch. I then create a second branch and enter in the size of 260. Using the same process, I'll create two more branches and assign a distance to them. Notice that I can adjust the length and the positioning of the static branches once they've been placed. This does not affect the value that I entered in for each branch. Next I will start adding my connectors using the create connector command. I select where I want to place the connector and the add connector dialog appears and allows me to define the connector. Here I enter a connector name and then search for a connector part from my library of parts. Once I've located the part, I can insert it into the design. Notice that there are numerous options that you can modify as desired. I'll accept the default and hit OK. Notice that my connector symbol is placed along with a cavity table. I'll repeat this same process and create another connector for the top node shown here. Once again, I'll select an existing library part for my connector. I then accept the default settings and place the connector. I'll repeat this process two more times to add two more connectors. 
To save you time, I'll accelerate this video to when all the connectors have been placed. Next, I'll use the create splice command to create a splice on this lower branch. I click to place the splice and the node position utility tool appears. This tool helps me position the splice in the exact position from either of the nodes. Once I position the splice, the add splice dialog appears where I can name the splice and associate it with a library part. I'll insert the selected part, and in this case, I'm going to scroll down and turn off the sealed option, and then I'll say OK to place the splice. Next, I'll use the create splice command to place an ultrasonic weld. Once again, I'll select the branch and use the node position utility to position the splice. In the Add Splice dialog, I'll change it to an ultrasonic weld and uncheck the sealed option. I'll then give it a name and insert an existing library part. Once I click OK, the ultrasonic weld is placed. Next, I'll add a clip by using the add clip command and positioning the clip similar to the way I positioned the splice. Once I position it, the add clip dialog appears where I can provide a name and an existing library part. As before, I insert the part and click OK and the clip is positioned and placed. Notice that as we've been placing these components, tables have also been placed. If you want to reposition a table, you can manually grab it and move it as shown here. There's also the option to fix the positioning of the move table. I can now use the edit wire command to start adding detailed wire information to my design. I'll start by adding the first wire and giving it a name. I can then define the wire specifications as shown here. I can then define where the wire starts by picking the start component and the cavity, and where the wire ends by picking the end component and the cavity. Once I apply this information, I can go up and create the next wire in my wire list. I'll continue to apply the detailed information for each wire that I need in this harness design. I've accelerated the video here to save your viewing time, and you'll notice if I go back into the edit command, I've created 11 wires with all the information including the from and to components and cavities. Notice that a master wire table has been placed on the diagram. I can reposition this by either manually moving it or I'm going to apply an existing style that repositions this for me automatically. With all the wire information entered, I can now create a multi-core which is required for this design. To do this, I use the Edit Multicore command and add a new multicore to the list. I can then edit this multicore and add an existing library part to it. Notice the similarity between all the dialogues when it comes to adding existing library parts. In this example, the multicore requires two wires. I can add the wires from my existing wire list using this dialog. Once I've completed this, the multi-core information is added to the wire list. Next, I'll demonstrate adding some insulation using one of the add insulation commands. In this example, I can use the node position utility to find the start and end points for this insulation tube.
Once positioned, I can select an existing library part for this installation. Notice how this is represented on the diagram. I'll also add some space tape insulation using the start and end points to define the position of the space tape. Once positioned, I can define this as space tape. And then as before, I can select an existing part from my library. With the space tape, I also have the options to define a certain number of parameters, such as distance between, number of turns, etc. Once I define those parameters and accept them, you notice how this is represented on the diagram. Next, I'll run a automatic part selection command, which automatically selects appropriate library parts and calculates all of the dimensions needed to generate a fully engineered bill of materials. I'll first run the wire part numbers command. And notice as I generate this, the results are shown in the lower pane. I'll then run the cavity components command. And again, the results are shown in the lower output window. I am now ready to run my design rule checks to determine the validity of this harness design. When I run this, you'll notice in the check tab, I have a list of issues. To address these issues, I'll use some more automated tools. I'll first run the wire multi-core length command. This calculates the length of each connector using the system parameters and connector-defined add-on knockoff values. I'll then run the calculate nodes bundles sizes command. This command takes into account the number of wires and insulation attributes at the location. And lastly, I'll run the calculate insulation totals command. This command calculates the total length of insulation required for each type of insulation. Notice that these automated commands have resolved all the existing issues. The harness design is now complete and valid. I still have the option to manipulate this design. To demonstrate this, I'll add a grip point to this lower branch. Once I position the grip point, I then can reposition this node and notice how the design updates to remain valid. As shown here with Solid Edge Harness Design, an experienced user can complete this valid harness design in less than 15 minutes. If you want to learn more about Solid Edge Wiring and Harness Design, contact your account manager or visit us at www.designfusion.com. You can also call our head office toll free at one triple eight five six seven three nine three three.